Hello. Uh, so like you said, I'm Alex and this is Yuri. Uh, today I'm just going to give a quick overview on why we personally care about vector search and, and what it is, uh, as well as um, what's recently happened uh, in Cassandra, in Cassandra 5.0 that makes vector search even possible. Um, we're going to be talking about the tests that Yuri ran, um, and then we're going to be saying, uh, telling you about what we learned from those tests that, um, that could be helpful to you or, or anybody running Cassandra. Uh, so we work on uh, Azure Managed Instance for Apache Cassandra at Microsoft. Uh, we have um, a lot of customers, and one of the sort of value propositions that we uh, give to those customers running Cassandra is that we know about Cassandra. So. Uh, we can help them run it, we can help them optimize their workloads, and so the reason we wanted to do these tests was so that we could give you know, valuable information to the people running Cassandra on Microsoft. Uh, and specifically uh, for vector search, being a um, AI tool, you know, with the rising tide of AI, we wanted to be able to sort of capitalize on that, you know, uh, get people interested in Cassandra because uh, it can support this sort of AI workload. Uh, and so now Yuri will give you the rest of the presentation. Yeah, so what is vector search? Um, uh, I'm, I'm assuming a lot of you know what vector search is already, so I'll be um, pretty brief here. Um, so <clears throat> we know that a, a vector is a collection of floating point numbers that represent some abstract quality of some object. Um, and they live in vector space here. Um, as you can see, Things that are more related to each other will live close to each other in vector space. Things that are unrelated to each other will live further than each other in vector space. Um, and when I talk about distance, um, there are a few ways to measure that. Um, there's cosine similarity, um, there's dot product similarity, there's Euclidean similarity. All of these are different ways of measuring distance between vectors. Um, and, and these give you a way to find similar data when you want to query something that's in vector space. Um, so one of the things that makes uh, vector search possible in Cassandra was the addition of storage attached indices. Um, these, are, these are per column indexing on, on any column that you want, um, and these are better than the uh, secondary indexes um, that we used to have, um, and, it, and they are faster than um, any other index that we have in Cassandra. Um, we can place these on multiple columns. Um, one of the things that we have tested is um, using these storage attached indices with filterings, with filters, uh, when we are querying for um, uh, ve uh, vector, when we are querying for vectors in um, Cassandra. The implementation of the Im the implementation Cassandra uses for its uh, approximate nearest neighbor search is based on J vector, which is based on disk A and N. Um, it's a it's like um, HNS, HNSW, but is it a single level graph with longer um, with longer edges, um, so that you can get to uh, what you're querying a bit faster, um, and it also reduces disk disk input output um, with those longer edges. Um, <clears throat> the the when you're building an index with J vector, it's also much faster. And uses much less space, and you have the and you have the added benefit of having um, concurrent updates uh, with with that index, which we don't see a lot in Asian SW um, implementations. Um, here on the right, we can see the uh, build time for uh, build time in relation to uh, threads with um, with uh, with J vector. Um, and we can also see its comparison with the Lucene, with the Lucene HNSW implementation um, on the bottom right there. <clears throat> um, it's, it's queries per second on the, on the deep 100 million data set. For the experiment, um, we used uh, DS, DS8B4s, which are 8 core, 64, uh, 64 gigabyte on disk, 32 gigabyte RAM, machines. Um, I used a three node cluster um, and the variables we were testing were the number of threads. Um, so we went from 16 to 32 to 64 to 100 threads um, and we tested different compaction strategies. We tested size, size tier compaction strategy, um, uh, uh, 
uh, level compaction strategy. Um, we did not test unified compaction strategy, and that's something that we want to do in the future. Um, we normalize all of our data sets, which just means to uh, take the vectors and then make the unit vectors and make them all have a magnitude of one. Um, this lets, uh, when, when this happens, you can make sure that the uh, vectors have, when you compare vectors, it gives it a better, a better sense of meaning between two vectors of different magnitudes. Um, we, for the benchmarking tool, we took inspiration from the Quadrant um, open source benchmarking tool. Um, and we and we use that and, ext and extended it to be able to be used with the Cassandra. Um, here is I'll come back to this slide. Um, here's an overview of some of the results that we got with different data sets. Um, as you can see here, there are these data sets are. Um, let me explain what they mean. Uh, the Glove 100. The numbers here are just the dimensionality of the data sets. Um, and then you have Angular or Euclidean, which is the distance that we use to test these data sets. Um, each data set here um, uh, gives a set of queries and a set of vectors and then a set of expected results. And the set of expected results is what we use to determine the precision um, that we get back when we uh, run the benchmarking tool. Um, so each vector has an ID tied to it. So when we insert a vector into the database, we will have an ID and we will have the vector content. Um, when we query for a vector, um, that vector will, when we query for a vector, we will limit the results by um, whatever we're testing. So for this test, we did 10. So we grab the, the closest 10 vectors, depending on the um, similarity, um, the similarity search they were doing. And then it, uh, we took the IDs that intersected with the expected results and then divided that by um, the total amount of results we get, in this case 10, and that gives us our precision. Um, uh, as you can see here, we can, ma we can maintain pretty high precision um, with good throughput. Um, we, we, our throughput lowers, our throughput seemingly lowers the more dimensionality the uh, data sets have. Um, back to this graph, we can see Cassandra here is the purple um, and we can see that it's, this reinforces that we um, hold high precision um, with high throughput, um, only being built by, by the Quadrant uh, database. So for tuning, um, we found that level compaction strategy is the best um, due to the read-heavy nature of the workflow. Um, uh, and as as uh, as it was explained in the previous um, presentation, um, these assets table are organized into levels, and that helps us. Um, uh, that guarantees us that we, that we only read one SS table when we're doing these simple selects. Um, and I already mentioned the threads that we use for testing. Um, obviously, the higher the amount of threads we use, we get more uh, throughput, but that comes at a cost to latency. And so, uh, in the, for the, fu the future of Cassandra, obviously, until Cassandra 5.0 goes GA, this is still just like a, a preview feature as a part of the beta in Cassandra 5. Um, but from um, what I've seen, Cassandra 5 is like very close to ready to be released. They're just, uh, like they uh, spoke about in a previous talk, they just want to make sure everything is actually fully production ready for real live clusters before they actually they go to their full release and they're just working out you know like kinks and and small issues uh, in the software um, there's also sep 39 the query cost optimizer um, that's specifically going to help vector search because with the cost optimizer the current uh, sql queries don't take into account um, indices when they're doing their query uh, when they're running their optimizations and they tend to heuristically avoid any kind of filtering. Um, this is, I mean, this makes sense for the earlier days of Cassandra, but as uh, Cassandra advances into um, wider scopes and more ranges, these changes will make it so things like vector search are able to run more effectively. 
So uh, that's why we care about vector search uh, and what it is. I'm sure a lot of you already have a pretty good idea about what vector search was. Um, but with the advancements made in Cassandra, um, the storage attached indices and J vector, vector search is, um, is very performant on Cassandra as a database. And I think we'll only get more so as time goes on. Uh, and I hope that you can take the results of our experiment and apply them to your own uh, vector search Cassandra experiences, uh, or at least that this maybe piqued your curiosity in using Cassandra for vector search. So, time for some questions.